that's something I couldn't do with a studio involved. Studio would be like, what? Co-own the IP with strangers and then they make it and then you share profit with them? None of this makes sense for the model. Great. So we disrupt the model and we go to a place where there is no fuck model and we create the fuck model ourselves. And you know, it sounds pie in the sky and it sounds like a fuck, you know, dude who did a bunch of coke and he's like, ooh, we could do this, we could do this. But it's reality, man. Like. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin here with Aaron, joined by the man, the legend, returning guest on the channel, filmmaker, director, Kevin Smith. Thank How you for joining you? us. Oh, thank you for having me. How are you, kids? We were just talking before we went. We all saw each other in the real world fairly recently, which is, that's that's rare real estate these days. Exactly. We, we had the honor to moderate your panel all about Kilroy Was Here, which you're minting as an NFT film. Um, you, you were a speaker, as were we, but we got to moderate your panel. How was that crypto conference for you? It was lovely. As I said, like at the con, the sense of community that you get um, at like something like VCon or at something like where we were, it, it's so infectious. Like this is how I've thrived, l let my career thrive for years. If I didn't have a community, if I didn't have the fan community, like the viewskew.com website, that Kevin Smith Club, the smodcast.com, all the things that we've done that engages with fans, not just makes a thing and says, here, fuck, buy it, but says, ooh, come to this thing, or hey, we're doing this thing, and not it doesn't always require money and stuff. Community has been a big part of what's kept me around. Without community, my shit would have been done a decade or more ago, 15 years ago. I'd been, oh, he made clerks once, and that's, the, that's it. The big businesses, like the big studios and shit, very rarely do they want to like work with me or think that it's not even that they want to work with me. They just don't think I'm worth it. They can always get somebody younger, cheaper, hotter, or more talented or something like that. So they work with me when it's good for them where they're like, oh, we, we like that you like our thing. So you can come work on that thing or something like that. So my, my jobs, it's not like they're fallen from the big studios stuff. I generally have to kind of create my own work and if you're creating your own work, who's going to support that but the community? So I've been a big part of that. That's what's kept my career going for decades. Stepping into that conference, same feeling. You're surrounded by a bunch of people who believe not just in you, but in this concept that we all believe in. People that see Web3 as like, wait, there's something happening. It's not over. It's just beginning. As somebody who is there for every incarnation of the web, like, I know that there are people who are like, this is going to be everything. And then they fuck off when it, it's not free money. And then the people who are left behind figure out what to do with this amazing technology. So in our case, you know, I've heard from any number of people who have any number of opinions on crypto and whatnot. They're like, oh, what are you doing with these NFT scams? I was like, this is not a scam. Our movie is the NFT. That's simple. Like, if you want the movie, it's an NFT. That's just like if you wanted the movie... As a Blu-ray, you'd have to buy the Blu-ray. This time, it's just an NFT. No scam, no hustle, very simple. I get a lot of like, well, why are you doing this? And my very simple answer, and it's honest, is like, because somebody else is going to do it. Somebody will do it before me if I don't do it now. We have a perfect asset for it. A movie that was not, inex not expensive, an inexpensive film that also isn't owned by a corporation already. We privately had this. My producer, David Shapiro, is a big fan of crypto and stuff. So he was down like a clown with the idea of like, oh my God, to take a movie out as the first NFT. He's like, like even if it financially rise or fall, you've got a little piece of history on your side and you've just made it easier for a bunch of people to now try the same. Some other smarter kid is gonna look at this and figure out how to make it work for them and their independent feature and stuff. So there's a, so many reasons to do it. The only reason not to do it is when a bunch of people are like, well, this is stupid and I don't understand it. But I've given up on listening to when people tell me things are stupid, they don't understand it and I shouldn't do it. I've told the story before, like we, before there was a Kickstarter or Indiegogo, we created a website called Red State Green that was about generating the budget for that movie Red State I wanted to make off of the audience. I had a million MySpace followers. So I was like, look, if they give us a buck a piece, we could totally make this movie. I don't need to go through a studio. 
and we were set up to launch like one week from this date. But then I went and did an interview. I was in Canada. I did an interview. I think I was there talking about, um, it was either Zach and Miri or I was there talking about the Walter Gretzky street hockey tournament. And somebody asked me like, what are you doing next for a film? And I said, oh, we're going to actually make that movie Red State I've been talking about for years, but we're going to do it like with the audience. The audience is going to pay for it. Like people that have been asking me to see it for years. So two days later, a guy wrote an article that said, ew, Kevin Smith's going to beg for money for his next movie. And it scared the shit out of me. I felt humiliated because he presented it in a way where I was like, well, I didn't think of it like that. Like I thought of it as like the audience wants to see it. We can make it happen to the audience through a sense of community, through this community I built. Then I got scared, turned back on my heels, instantly killed it. Killed the website, which we spent 20 grand building. and Because again, Kickstarter didn't, didn't exist yet. So I got scared, walked away. Kickstarter comes along. Uh, Zach Braff then becomes the first filmmaker who raises the entire budget of a movie off of the, the, the audience using crowdsourced financing. And, you know, it's not like, and that movie was Star Wars. You know, it's, it doesn't matter what the movie was. He was the first through the door and I could have been, but I got scared. A stranger scared me off of what I knew was a good idea. Didn't matter whether I was right or wrong. It was blazing a new trail and I got scared and I didn't do it. And I regretted it to this day. It bugs me that I sold out on myself because somebody was like, ew, I don't get it. I'll tell you right now, boys, if the internet had existed before I made Clerks, I probably would have never even tried to make it. The internet is a very negative place where everybody just wants to tell you like, that's stupid, don't do that. You're gonna get hurt, that's dumb. Go ahead, shit like that. You gotta find enthusiasm, you gotta hold on to it. That's the secret, that's the key. And my enthusiasm for taking Kilroy out as an NFT has never waned. Thankfully, the good folks at, at Legend Out, Secret Network came to us with a better incarnation of what David and I were talking about. We were talking about, we'll auction it to one person. They were like, don't do that. Just do it as a series of NFTs that we could put out there into the world so a bunch of people could get it. And then you're going to show people at a low price point because, you know, some shit's expensive. Our shit's like a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks, whatever the, the price point is for the Kilroy NFT. Very affordable. The idea is you get to bring some people from your world into this mystifying Web3 community, into the world of NFTs and stuff. Because all they've heard are articles that they've read the first two sentences of, or a friend has told them what this is and it's a scam. I've been spending so much time re-educating people going, how is it a scam? If like you want a movie, the NFT is on a movie, you're buying the NFT with the movie, congratulations, you have it all. Plus you own that piece of generative art. Like it's not like a scam. And I understand like they've heard so many things and so many people have come into the space, but those people are now, you know, the people that don't know what to do with the space, just came to try to make some money, that's dissipating right now. And what you're left with is the true creatives who are like, what can we do with this technology? And what I wanna do with it is this, because I guarantee you the moment this happens, if it makes a nickel, like you're gonna buy another version of fuck T2 on NFT because every studio will release their entire fucking catalog the same way. There's one more place where we can sell our wares, great. And I know they're watching, like, and I'm not, it's not paranoid talk. I've heard from studio people who are like, I'm watching, this is brilliant. I hope this fucking works. And that's not them going, good for you, Kev. That's them going, because if it works, we're going to make money off of it as well. Because if a chimp like you could figure it out, the real money people could figure it out next. So I'm, I'm stoked. I'm enthusiastic as hell um, at this point in time, as we, you know, come to our first historic drop, man, like, will it work? I hope so. We seem to have a strong community behind us and the good folks at Secret and Legend Dow have been tireless in kind of promoting us, getting us out there and stuff. Um, but even if it doesn't work financially or whatnot, we still have those nice bragging rights of like, we did it first. I won't have much of that in my life going forward. I'm getting older. I'm not as relevant and shit. There's hot new things coming up all the time. I don't make Marvel movies or Star Wars movies. I just love them and shit. So at the end of the day, like my opportunity to be the first through the door, you know, those chances are dwindling. I've had my chances. I'm not bitching. My whole career has been a series of like first through the door. But, you know, it's infectious. And when you start to lose that, you know, when you just become part of the standard. I remember there was a, a review in TV Guide, which was a magazine we used to read to watch television when we were kids. 
there is a review and TV guide of Saturday Night Live. And I think it's like 10, 15 years into its run. And the article said, when the outlaw becomes the law, it's just not the same anymore. The supposition was this show can't be what it was because now they are part of the establishment. I didn't personally believe it. I think SNL has been able to maintain their status, you know, even though they are part of the establishment for years. So that always haunted me, that quote. Like, and I started my career as an absolute outlaw. You know, I didn't come from this business. I was an outlier to say the least. There's something to being that your whole career. You know, you can't be that when you're part of the landscape at this point like i ain't saying i'm like i belong on the mount rushmore film but i've been around three decades like motherfuckers know like yeah that's kevin smith he does kevin smith type movies and shit like that so the ability to surprise to bring something new to the table to the conversation eludes me the older i get this is a perfect opportunity to do that it's a perfect opportunity to be like hey maybe you guys don't know about this but there's this playground over here in web three that we can all go at. And if you're not interested, great. But I'm very interested because I could build community here. I've already know where the sequel's coming from. You know how hard it is to come up with a sequel? It's very easy when you're like, guess what? I'm going to make the sequel with the people that bought the fucking NFT, man. Like, problem solved. Like, it's, it's just fun and invigorating. And for a creative who's never been about like money, I don't get me wrong, I'm no communist. I like making money, but that has never been the aim. The aim is to put something out there that hadn't been done before. Say something that hasn't been said before. That's all I could bring to this life. That's the currency that I can bring to the table. The currency God can spend is the currency of my own voice, my own perspective. And this is a chance to do it like one more time. It's like, you know, I'm coming out in a couple months with Clerks 3 and I love the movie and it's fantastic. And we're gonna tour it like we did Jay and Sal and Bob reboot. But you know, it is three. So it's not like anyone's going to be like, what's this about? You know, it better be about the shit they're expecting. Otherwise we fuck up. So I can't really surprise them with that. Can't surprise them with the clerks tour because we've already toured re reboot. And they're like, that's what Kevin does. He tours movies. So to be able to surprise your audience, to be able to keep the story going, to be able to have people be like, well, that's interesting. You have to do new shit. This is as new as it gets. And it's so new that I've been taking a lot of shit for it. You know, a bunch of people who don't understand it are like, you're a fucking idiot. And, I'm used to that. People tell me I'm dumb every day in my life. You know, every day I jump online, there are a bunch of people who tell me like, oh, everything you do is wonderful. And there are a handful of people who tell me you suck and everything you've done is terrible. So you got to find your truth somewhere between the two. They're probably both right on some level. But at the end of the day, this little piece of real estate, you know, where it's like, hey, we can go out there as the first minted NFT. I'm sticking my ground on it, man. Like I, I've I feel good about this. I'm not saying like, and history is made, but a little bit of history is being made. So I'm enjoying it. I feel good about it too. Um, I mean, I would say that you're one of the best directors, at least one of our favorite directors, I would, would say. You know, we I'll grew up on your movies. I'll, I'll fight you on best, but I'll take favorite. <laughs> one of our favorite. We used to watch your movies growing up with our dad. And we were even a fan of your talks, whether your college talks, whether you were on HBO or Showtime, one of those, you know, talking about the Prince documentary, talking about Lord of the Rings versus Star Wars, talking about uh, Wild Wild West, the movie. Yes. So Giant was, fighters. Yes, exactly, exactly. So it was so cool being in Austin, Texas for Decentral Conference, uh, you know, seeing you on stage doing one of those talks and two things really uh, stood out to me being uh, being a fan after after the talk was over when we were just hanging out. Number one. Number that, one was you were like, I can't believe you sweat as much as you do. <laughs> You you came you came uh, dressed as uh, Silent Bob. I mean, you were in the overcoat and it was Texas. It was a bad choice to wear a coat in Austin, Texas, <laughs> like ninety degree heat. But still, I felt like I had to be on brand. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, the two things that impressed me: one, that Jason Muse Jay was just with you. He was hanging out. It was like the movie. You guys are just friends hanging out. And two, that after it was all over that you just hung out with people by the food trucks, talking with people. If somebody wanted a picture, video, or just a chat, you were down to do that with everybody. Mm. Oh my God. I mean, that's why I did it. Like people are so kind. They come up to you in public and they're like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't want to disturb you. I'm a big fan. And I was like, you didn't disturb me. That was the plan. Like I did all this shit so that you would be forced to come over to me in public and be like, I like what you do. So if you come over and say that, and if you want a picture, that just means to me, 
the plan is working. Like, this is exactly what I wanted my life to be. I wanted strangers to come over to me and be like, I like you. Do you know what kind of joy I have in life when I just leave this house, man? I just go to like Whole Foods. I just go to like a veggie grill or I just go to pick up cigarettes for my wife or I go to the weed store. And I invariably absolute strangers who I've never met in this life and probably will never meet again. Smile at me, bro. They just fucking like. And then they'll say like, hey, man, like, love your stuff. And they move the fuck on like. It's a blissful life. It's tough to get people to say kind things to you in this world. Every day I walk out the building, every day I walk out my house, kind words come at me, kind intentions, kind eyes. People will sit there and tell me the most incredible fucking shit about how some dopey bullshit I made up changed their life. It's profound when somebody's like, hey man, let me tell you the story about how Chasing Amy stopped me from killing myself. Of course I'm captivated by that. I'm the guy that made that shit. And I didn't make it going like, I want to get rich. I made it going like, fuck, I hope this connects with somebody. I hope they hear me. And to have those people go like, I hear you, even just by looking at you and giving you that fucking nod, man. And some of them don't even know my name. Some will be like, Kevin James. I don't <laughs> even correct them. I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to tell Leah Remini you said hi. <laughs> you know, it don't matter. They, they know who you are. Maybe they don't. I got a pretty easy, you know, basic last name. It's not like Tarantino, memorable. It's boring like Smith or James. So we're kind of interchangeable. Sometimes they call me Silent J. I don't mind that at all. I know that something I've done is given them some fucking joy. And they relate you to that moment of joy in their life. Like, that's why people who are my age who've come up with me, like, they'll tell me, like, I've been with you since 94 and stuff. That means that, like, I've been a part of the narrative of their life. Like, those movies have been around. They shared them with their spouses. I've met so many people who are like, the reason I married him is because he loved your movies and shit like that and vice versa. So I, I love being around the audience. I mean, that's why I do it. I don't do it in a vacuum. I, truthfully, I do make these movies for myself. It's very masturbatory, but I make them because I also want to know what everyone else thinks. So if they got time to tell me good or bad, I'll take it. Kevin, let's talk about <clears throat> some of like the trendsetter or the revolutions that are happening with this NFT kill Robus here. Um, could you talk about the utility, but more specifically, you've said, I believe at our conference that we moderated, um, that you hope the audience uses these characters, creates their own stories, and they get the IP if if they buy the NFTs, and then you might use that in the next film. Could you speak on that? Oh, it ain't might. It's a done fucking deal. So the idea was you know, I, when uh, the, the Bored Ape folks, when you buy a Bored Ape, you own that Bored Ape, you can do anything you want with it. So I said to the folks at Secret, like, because we hadn't, talked about this i was like the generative piece of kilroy art can we let them own that like the way they own a board ape so that they could or one of those reezy witherspoon nfts so they could do whatever they want with it like they can market it they can make a movie off it and they turned it back to me they're like kilroy is yours so it's up to you and i was like well kilroy is not really mine i you know, took it from the world war one and two memes and we adopted him into our character and stuff. And he's got the look. And But I can't truly say, it's not like Jay and Silent Bob where it's like, I invented this shit. So I felt like since I don't technically own Kilroy, why should I be like, well, you can't technically own Kilroy either. So I was like, let's share our incarnation of Kilroy the same way we borrowed the unowned incarnation of Kilroy. And they were like down like a clown for it. So the idea is this. That Kilroy that it comes with, aside from the movie and whatnot on the NFT, the piece of generative art, the solo piece of art that's yours, that is your Kilroy to make whatever you want with. And what I'm encouraging people to do is make a short film, make a piece of animation, make a piece of art, something filmed entertainment, because that's how we're going to keep making sequels to Kilroy till the end of time. That's my dream, is that we got the first NFT franchise, never mind like the first movie is an NFT, a self-fulfilling franchise that starts with a bunch of art consumers who then become art collaborators. Cause you buy this thing, you own this thing, you watch the movie kill where you're like, that's the formula is it's creep show. Fuck, I could do that. I can make a fucking five to 10 minute morality story and shit like that. And then you take your Kilroy and you do the story with it. We take yours. I create the framing device that keeps all four or five of them together. Just like with this first movie, bam, that's the sequel. Whoever is creating that chapter 
owns a piece of that movie going forward. So now, right now, I'm trying to sell everybody my Kilroy movie. Kilroy 2 is made by me and the audience. They're trying to sell their audience the movie as well. So the audience kind of grows. I saw somebody be like, well, this sounds stupid. That means the audience is going to get smaller and smaller. I was like, I think it's the opposite. I think the audience gets larger and larger. Let's say you're a film school kid or some kid wants to like make a splash, be noticed. It's tough to be noticed in this world now because there's so much content we're drowning in it. Easiest way to get noticed is I made this content, this Kilroy short, and it's part of this uh, film with Kevin Smith and mine looks way better than his. You could see it. You're going to get attention for being in the Kilroy sequels and stuff. So I felt like that would be more fun than just like, here, you own this and you can do whatever you want with it. It's like, all right, now you own it. Now you saw how simple it is. Like, and Kevin Smith is no fantastic filmmaker. So they'll be able to watch the movie and be like, that's it. All right, I can make one of those. And then bam, we're collaborating. Like, that's something I couldn't do with a studio involved. Studio would be like, what? Co-own the IP with strangers and then they make it and then you share profit with them? None of this makes sense for the model. Great. So we disrupt the model and we go to a place where there is no model and we create the model ourselves. And, you know, it sounds pie in the sky and it sounds like a you know dude who did a bunch of coke and he's like, oh, we could do this. We could do this. But it's reality, man. Like, this is the shit. This is how I've conducted the last 30 years of my life. You come up with a very simple, achievable dream. I ain't talking about shit like, you know, I'm creating the first jetpack, boys. No, I'm talking about shit that, like, is doable. People will use their art to make their own Kilroy short. And in that world, I can do the same, make a framing device, put them together. I know how to make a movie, bring their piece into it. Suddenly, we've made a thing, man, like directed by blank, 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 and blank. That's fun to me. That's going to keep me going. And even on the very basic selfish level, what if I'm Roger Corman? What if one of those fuck turns out to be Jim Cameron one day? You know what I'm saying? Like, I've got some early skin in the game. I know a great artist before they blossom into that great artist that the world will know. So many good reasons and fun reasons to do this. Totally. Uh, number one, another way that I can tell you're a great director is that you know how to hold the frame. You know, so many crypto people come on here and they're like down here or they're down the side. You, you can control yeah. the frame. That's good. We like that. <laughs> I try. I've had years, man. If I, yeah. I, I always go for that Kubrickian symmetry, try to make it equal, as, equal on all sides, but nice. so far so good. Nice. I, I'm pretty sure I, I might have the details wrong. I hope I have the timeline right. Last time when you came on our channel last year, and you were working on the smoking tokens, the Jay and Silent Bob themed smoking tokens. Um, I believe one of the questions we asked you is if Tarantino gets into NFTs, what advice would you give him? And you kind of you know, speculated on that. Well, since then, Tarantino has gotten into NFTs. I believe he's working with the Secret Network as well. And you guys have the common interest of Miramax back in the day. Did you guys ever get in discussions lately about NFTs or anything? I haven't seen Quentin since when was the last time I saw him? I guess at the premiere for uh, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, because the kid was, my kid was in the movie. So mm -hmm. I, I was I was at the premiere and I- Who's played, your kid play? Harley played uh, Froggy, one of the Manson kids. Nice, those scenes were awesome. Yeah, it was, yeah, she had a good time. And I was, I was, I remember when she was trying out for it, I was like, kiddo, everybody wants to be in this movie. I was like, I want to be in this movie. So <laughs> lower your expectations got it and she was just like yeah bro thanks for the belief and i was like i was just trying to protect you so i think the last time i saw him was at the once upon a time in hollywood premiere we did not talk about nfts back then but him doing the nft release directly led us to guy and to secret and to the legend down because after they did that with quentin they were like we want to do another film project so they were they were like they had a lot of heat a lot of attention so like what's another film project and suddenly kilroy like popped up so Quentin, just like when, you know, Quentin made Pulp Fiction, even before that, when he made Reservoir Dogs. Like, I remember seeing Reservoir Dogs at uh, the Third Street Cinema up in uh, Manhattan. And, um, you know, they opened the movie with a big conversation about Like a Virgin. You know, they're breaking down the lyrics mm -hmm. to Madonna's song, Like a Virgin. And here's these guys who are going to go on and uh, heist, a you know, diamond heist, uh, having a pop culture conversation. Uh, that was revelatory and life-changing for me because I'm like, this counts? Like, this counts as movie dialogue? They can just sit around and talk about, like, this is what me and my friends do when we talk about movies. I'm going to write that one day. 
And so when I wrote Clerks, it was all about having dissections of Star Wars and movie dialogues and stuff. So Quentin paved the way for me um, as a filmmaker, as a storyteller. And then ironically paved the way for me like with the secret network people, they had such a good experience with them and it was so successful. They were like, all right, what's the next one? And I was like, I'm an indie film guy from the nineties. And suddenly here we are in business. So yeah, I, I, my, now I guess I should seek advice from him because technically he went, he went first. Um, team effort, team effort. Really? But um, I, I want to ask you a big picture question, but just final thoughts on Kilroy minting the NFT. Your link will be down below to the website, but final thoughts on Kilroy was here. Uh, you know, I got butterflies in my stomach. I hope it works out. Like, I hope, you know, we're not embarrassed. And it was like, we sold two, you know, <laughs> but even if we did, again, we get, we, we did it first. Like, it'll happen again and again and again, and it'll happen very successfully under other people who are not me, I'm sure. But for for, for this moment in time, you know, me and Secret, me and the Legend Dow folks, David Shapiro, we get to, you know, be the first to step off the, the lander. One small step for a bunch of crypto fans, one giant step for Web3, if I may paraphrase. That's yeah. me coming down a ladder, boys. That's <laughs> you know, and, and by the way, like, for example, if George Lucas would have done something like this with Star Wars back in the day, Obviously, that would have had huge effects with all the people like telling stories for those characters. Um, this is this question is more of a fun one. But now looking in the future, by 2030, let's say, from a filmmaker's point of view, how do you see this NFT space evolving? I think we'll probably be able to enter the NFTs in 30 years. It won't just be. It'll, it'll, yeah. Oh, God. Are you kidding me? We'll be talking transdimensional by that point. So I think you'll be able to move into the NFT space. I mean, we may be looking for a retail or apartment space in the in Web3 community. I think somebody will figure out how to harness turning digit space into actual physical space. Like, you know, in, in Superman, like the Fortress of Solitude is in a very small, like, fuck circular cylinder or whatever if i forget what the ter term for it is but that's the pie in the sky man we're gonna live in nfts in 30 years um point of fact is we'll probably be doing a lot of our media storytelling and news gathering everything that we do now with youtube we're going to be doing with nfts as well I, I just think honestly like to scrape all the the um you know, uh, grandiose ideas out of the way, you're just going to be buying your entire movie catalog over again, at least one more time with NFTs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I just think the world is trending more digital in general. So when we're talking about NFTs as collectibles, you have collectibles behind you right now. Maybe, you know, a normal person, 20 or their friends would see it in their lifetime for you. I'm sure a couple hundred see it over the years. But if you have digital collectibles online, possibly hundreds and hundreds of people could see it. And even more so, you have community with people all over the world who have that same stuff that you wouldn't have been able to connect with otherwise. Way more appreciated. Who was it? I forget who told me, explained it to me thusly. It was like, look, I could buy a sword, a real life sword and hang it in my room and about 10 people will see it over the course of a year. Or I could buy an online sword, use it in games, feature it prominently, showcase it, and millions of people will see it. And, you know, at the end of the day, why do we buy these things? A, they make us happy, but B, we like to show them off. We like to show people our stuff. And, you know, it makes more sense to own that, that sword, you know, in the crypto space, in the Web3 space than it does in the real world. You can actually hurt somebody with a real sword in the real world. There's downsides to it. There, it's all good. It's an asset. And not just like an asset, it's something can be, you could trade it for money. You could use it in a game. You could use it for cosmetic. You, you know, it's multi-purpose. It just made more sense. I think it was Austin, my daughter's uh, boyfriend who explained it to me that way. And he was like, think about how much time you spend online. He's going now, look at, and he's going, you've curated the space behind you for people to see what's going on behind you. He's going, you care about what people see. You care about the presentation. You care about sharing those things with people. Doesn't it make more sense to share it in the space where we all live almost 90% of our lives? And I was like, you're absolutely right. And that's not a guy who's going like, hey man, you know, start living in a fucking 
visor, man. It's all, you know, fuck, yeah, what is it? Uh, uh, v, no, VR, virtual, uh, yeah, VR or something like, or AR. A- AR, yeah. Um, it, it's not him doing that. It's not him saying, your version of the future is wrong, old man. It's just him logically putting it out there in a, with facts that I already deal with on a regular basis. Like he didn't have to convince me. I was like, oh, that's, you're absolutely right. I spend way more time online. Like where, where do I share most of the images of the things that I have? Online, I take a picture of that real world thing and I bring it here. We're coming to a place where the line is gonna be divided by, between the real world thing and the image of the real world thing. And smart places are doing both. Like you pick up this NFT, it comes with this. I think Funko is doing a bunch of that kind of stuff. It just makes sense. Like in a world where I'm already selling like a bunch of tchotchkes, having a digital iteration of that, that somebody can whip out their digital wallet or show on, on their socials makes a lot more sense. So you credit your uh, daughter's boyfriend and you're like, all right, you're smart enough. I guess you can keep dating my daughter. I was, I was like, look, in a world where you're having sex with my only offspring, at least you brought something to the table. Thank you for that. <laughs> I got a little something out of it as well. <laughs> very chill, very chill. Um, I, You know, Clerks 3 coming up. I understand filming's over. You guys in post-production now. The crypto community wants to know, uh, a lot of people, like we're fans of Clerks in general, and that, obviously those are the people going to come see the film, but the crypto community wants to know, how crypto is related to Clerks 3. Are Jay and Silent Bob getting wrecked trading? I hear BitBoy makes a cameo. Can you, can you tell us about that? BitBoy makes a cameo. Um, a bunch of people play in our movie, the, the uh, Christian, first the Christian Crypto Club, which then becomes the Crimson Crypto Club later on by virtue of the uh, plot of the movie. Um, uh, Elias, who is our character from Clerks 2, played by Trevor Furman, um, he picks up a, a friend a sidekick of his own, kind of like his own Silent Bob. Uh, and that character's name is Blockchain Coltrane. So crypto plays a big part in, in our world um, and a very affectionate uh, part as well. So I remember when I was writing it, I felt like nobody's done the crypto jokes yet. Like when I did Jay and Silent Bob reboot, uh, Strike Back, back in 2001, we literally had to include a scene where we explained what the internet was because not everyone was on the internet. So in order for the movie to work, you had to be like, the internet is a place where people blah, blah, blah. I had the same experience with Clerks 3 and crypto when I was writing it, because I was like, not everybody knows about this. Now, <laughs> a lot of people know about crypto, have very misinformed opinions about crypto and stuff. So we got to play with all of that as well. But I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, we don't, you know, say hodl or anything like that in the movie, but I feel like we may be the first movie that's very crypto friendly. I think the crypto audience is going to feel seen by this flick. That's Kevin, awesome. Do, do we have a, do we have a release date? Yeah, it comes out this fall, man. We, uh, I think uh, the trailer debuts a week from today, drops a week from today. We start touring the movie September 5th. And then it comes out on screens everywhere like a week after that. So yeah, it's coming up pretty soon. Will there be a Los Angeles premiere? Absolutely. And now I don't know about a premiere, but we'll screen in Los Angeles for sure. Since it's a tour, like here, I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't like premieres because nobody pays. Costs a lot of money and nobody pays to go. And I'm in the business of selling tickets. So the premieres are always for a bunch of people that like never worked on the movie. Just a bunch of famous people who live in town and stuff. For me, I'm like, you know, I'm sure we'll do some sort of premiere. Yes. Long story short, I'm sure there will be some sort of premiere out here and hopefully it's at the Chinese theater. But for me, whenever they're like, hey, the premiere, I'm like, oh, that premiere. Right. Right. <laughs> that premiere. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there will be, as a matter of fact. We just saw Top Gun at the Chinese theater just a couple of days ago. It was awesome. Um, if you guys do have an LA premiere, feel free to float us a couple of tickets. We'll cover it. Don't answer. You don't have to answer, Kevin. I know everybody asks you that. No, but... no, no. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to give you boys one ticket and see who <laughs> walks away with it. We have, like uh, it. you know, we've kind of done that at uh, Hollywood parties before trying to get us both in. So basically one hangs out outside <laughs> and then do the bathroom switch. Yeah, yeah. I think we... we'll cover you both, man. I think we'll be able uh, to handle two tickets. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yo, but Kevin, I know you have a bunch of interviews lined up, so uh, we'll let you go. Just final thoughts for the Altcoin Daily audience. 
Um, always a pleasure talking uh, to the Arnold boys, number one, man. Uh, you guys have been very sweet to me all this time that I've uh, been jumping into the space. Um, I encourage everyone to come out, of course, and pick up uh, Kilroy Was Here, the first movie minted as an NFT. Uh, but more importantly, even if you're not, even if you're like, I can't afford that, or I'm, I'm not, I'm just not in that space or whatever, uh, keep an open mind, kids, because uh, we're going to, I'm staying in the space. Uh, this is not like me dropping in, trying to get some money and rug pulling and stuff. I'm here to play and stay. So maybe we don't get you this time around, but hopefully we'll get you next time around as well. If you do pick up a Kilroy NFT, feel free to tweet it at us, tag Kevin Smith and us, and we will retweet it. A million followers on Twitter. Can't guarantee Kevin with 4 million, but we will definitely retweet it. I will as well. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Excellent talking to you kids, man. Be good. 